So let's kick this off. So interview preparation for a data professional. Data professional is anyone who falls into the data engineering, data science, machine learning, analytics, BI, any of those spaces. It can be the same, you can follow this same format if you're interviewing with tech managers or if you're following with HR managers. I would always make sure that you do some research on the company you're interviewing with. And by that, I don't mean, hey, let's have a quick scan of Wikipedia, let's know when they were founded. I mean, go a little bit more deeper into that. Have a look at a company's website. Find out what the values are. Find out what the company's goals are, their mission statement. The likelihood is, is that if you can reciprocate these back in the interview, you're going to show real value in your research and you're going to come across a very good communicator. Same thing on LinkedIn. On LinkedIn, these companies are always sharing events that their staff are taking part in that their staff are speaking at, if it's an event maybe you attended, or if it's, uh, I don't know, maybe something Pi Data, and you're really interested in Python, tell them, hey, I've seen that you guys are speaking at this conference. I think that's cool. Check them out in the news. What are they doing? Is their acquisitions going on? How's the stocks performing? This will go through and scrape all the leading newspapers and do all this work for you so that you can find all the top news that you should know about this company of late. Research the, the person you're interviewing. So if you have the luxury of knowing who it is you're meeting with, check them out on LinkedIn. You know, find out what their interests are. LinkedIn sometimes has volunteer work. It has, uh, you know, I'm a po I do podcasts. If someone told me that I was, when I was interviewing, hey, I love your podcast, I'd be really interested. Like, Did you listen to it? You're going to break down those barriers. You're going to start to talk to them. Another thing that's probably more common is that people have articles that they've written. You know, ask them, hey, I noticed you wrote an article on, on TensorFlow. So why is TensorFlow important to you? And then I have my activities that I do outside of my day-to-day -day job. So I'm a founder of an AI in Action Meetup and I'm a founder of an AI in Action podcast. If you're able to tell some of this information, it, you're just going to come across so good in an interview, you're going to break down all these walls that are generally difficult to actually, to actually get over. You know, you're going to end the walls are built high. You start talking about them, showing interest in them, they're automatically going to think you're a good person. They're going to be like, yeah, you're a good guy. Interview techniques. So this uh, the technique I follow is actually called the star interview technique. But for me, I always sort of say it, give an example with absolutely everything that you're working on. So it's very important. When I mean give an example, I don't just mean, yeah, I use Spark or I use Kafka every day. It's all about knowing the difference between a good example. You know, it's great to say, oh, I work on Spark every single day. But really, what you want to be doing is, we had this old data warehouse that we had, which was original Microsoft SSIS. And uh, what we did is my job was to actually re-engineer and redevelop a brand new data pipeline using Spark and Kafka and Python. It's so like the reason why I was to do this is because our original source was too slow and we wanted to move towards real time data. The value it added to the business was X speed it added, uh, processing time was down so much, and then how much it added in the cost. So you've got a real business value. You've given the situation, you've given the task, you've given the action of what you had to do with it. Now I like this part and I left it out, is when you're leaving the action in, you can also tell them where you've made mistakes. Hey, I tried this technology or this tool, it didn't work. You know, I went back, I done bug fixes. It was important that I done those because, of, because it actually saved me X amount of time in the overall code. It made my code more, more usable. And then the overall result. So a lot of people do not talk about the result enough. The result is probably the most important because it shows that you understand the business value of your job and it really differentiates you from someone else who cannot communicate why they do what they do versus you if you can. And then on a very basic level, I would say pick your core examples for each technology that are relevant to the position that you're interviewing for. So if Python's the core tech stack, have a star example on Python. AWS, the same. I'm going to say the same thing about Spark, Java, Kafka, Hadoop. If they're going to ask you, hey, tell me about how you, how you process streaming data, how you get real-time data, have a star example involved. The reason why it's a star example is because you are using interview language. You are not using internal language that you would speak with when you're speaking to your colleague at work. Yeah, we just process our data real-time using Spark and Kafka. That's great. 
for, for, for Mr. Bourne, when Mr. Bourne works with you every day of the week and he's in your environment and he speaks your language, he sees your problems. But if you go in and you're interviewing Mr. Anthony Kelly and he doesn't know anything about your business and he doesn't know what your company do, it's, like it's important that you're able to make this information as clear as Takes us on to our next one. Talk about you. In these projects, everyone has a team. So your team's overall project is to build a data warehouse that's going to process data in real time. That's the team's goal. Where do you come in? What's your contribution? Tell them where you came in and the planning aspect of it. Tell them where you came in and where you maybe where you maybe saved the project because of your individual input, your individual contribution. My individual contribution led to the successful implementation of Spark and Kafka and the successful migration because I was able to manage Microsoft uh, SSIS over to Spark and Kafka, but tell them the little breakdowns of every process you've done in between them and let them understand the value that you can bring. Project. And then I would say with all these points, practice, practice, practice. Very simple. Barcelona, Real Madrid, they train every day of the week to play a match on the weekend. This is everything. Tennis, Roger Federer plays tennis every day, but he doesn't have a grand slam every week or every day. He is preparing for that. When you are interviewing, you are you may be very good at your job, which is great. It's like, but that doesn't mean you're good at telling somebody that doesn't work in your business what your job is or how you do your job or how you make sure that, that everything ticks and that everything performs. That is what being a good interview is. So to understand that, you have to practice. I used to record myself and listen back to it. I was then able to hear myself where I was making mistakes on my own star interview technique. I used to put my earphones in on the bus and it made a difference. I've also heard my manager, he used to try it in the mirror. He used to rehearse his answers day after day in the mirror. You rate your answers and you improve every single one of them categorically just by hearing yourself out loud and hearing how you're getting them wrong. You've done so much more. Always have questions prepared. I always aim to have about five to eight questions prepared. Some people will say five, I will say eight because statistically speaking, you're going to ask questions throughout the interview that's also going to take away from your questions that you want to ask at the end. And you will always have questions at the end and you will want to understand this. But as an interview goes on, you forget. So I would always say have these questions to ask at the end and make them specific to the company, to the team, to the technology and the environment. What way do you see the trends affecting the technology and your environment? Yeah, that's great. I was like, but what I really do and what I what I see as, as a differentiator on this part is that you can ask real specific questions to that company. Hey, I see you guys are looking to implement the machine learning labs. Why? What's the business impact that's going to bring? How is that going to impact all the other domains that you guys have in this business? How is that going to solve these? You know, that is very specific to one interview that you can use to show that you're really listening and you're really engaged. Again, it comes back to the communication. If you're following this technique, your communication is just going to come across so much better. Another one I would say, and some people do or do not do this, I think it's all about if you feel comfortable. Um, throughout the interview, I would pick out points that they like or that you like and then show that you've got common interests. I was in this situation only last week. I had two people go for a final round interview. Uh, I, I prepped my candidate to say that he was interested in the job. And then when it came to the feedback, he got offered the job and not the other candidate. The feedback from the manager was is that they felt that my candidate was more engaged in the process. They felt that he would try harder and that he and that they knew he was interested. And very important. If you tell them you're interested, you're less of a risk. They don't see you as the candidate. Oh, if we offer him the job, he might not take it. But be specific. Again, hey, I see you're building machine learning labs there. It's like, that's amazing. That's some experience that I want to work on. I'd love to see that. I'd love to understand how he's going to build that from scratch. I'd like to be a part of that. I'd be really interested in working, working with you on that project.
challenges and mistakes you have made. This has actually come up a lot. It's come across the people who say they never face challenges, they're not genuine, or they maybe have an ego issue that they don't want to tell hiring managers that they've made mistakes, they're too proud or they're too good to make mistakes. This is not a question about you making mistakes or you facing challenges. This is a question about how you communicate when you're faced in a difficult situation. Uh, I had a great example from a candidate who said, I, was, uh, I went off and I'd done a, a test-driven development course and I was really eager to implement that in my business. But when I did in the first opportunity that I had, uh, the feedback was that I didn't do as strongly as I could have from my manager and he said he wouldn't like me to do it again by myself. So what he'd done, he actually paired me up with somebody who was stronger at test-driven development and he matched us down a project together. What I learned from that is, and you tell them all the learnings you get from test-driven development, this comes right back to you doing anything, you know, learning a new technology. What's the ramp up period? Implementing the wrong technology. You know, push, pushing code out at the wrong time, not being able to push your code out. There's a lot of different things that are considered a challenge or a mistake. You don't necessarily have had to cost a company hundreds of thousands of millions for it to be considered. Just do not be the person who says that they were never challenged or that they've never made a mistake.